Um, um, wait, wait, wait. The, the fourth dimension isn't some supernatural, obscure thing. Anyone can understand it. Here, let me show you. When a physicist says dimension, we're referring to a measurement, typically of space. We can represent each dimension as a variable and geometrically as a line. When we have multiple dimensions, these are independent measurements. I need a new direction and distance in order to describe higher dimensional objects. We live in a three-dimensional space, so we can easily describe and visualize three-dimensional objects, like cubes and spheres, two two-dimensional planes, two one-dimensional lines, two zero-dimensional points. But what about the fourth dimension? Well, dimension is not just limited to spatial distance. In physics, particularly the theory of special relativity, we introduce time as its own dimension, and we describe our universe in this background of four-dimensional space-time. This can be graphed like this, where we've collapsed the normal three dimensions of space into one for visualization. But just know that each point on this line actually corresponds to three coordinates. The origin represents our present, both in location and time. All other points are called events. Because of the features of special relativity, namely that the speed of light is constant no matter what, this fourth dimension of time is different from that of the spatial dimensions. In order to compute spatial distance, we use the distance formula, which is essentially Pythagorean's theorem. As expected, if I increase the distance along one dimension, the sum distance should increase. However, in special relativity, we use a different geometry, that of Minkowski spacetime. If I increase the distance along the time axis, I actually decrease the length between two events. This is because the speed of light is constant and is the upper bound of transmission between two events. In order for two events to be causally connected, meaning one could impact the other, they have to fall within the event's light cone. If the event is outside of the light cone, it would need to send information faster than the speed of light to reach it. The distance between two events on the light cone itself is zero, and if the distance is greater than zero, then they are called space-like separated, meaning no causality. And if the distance is less than zero, then they are called time-like separated, which means causality can occur. The fourth dimension of time is different from spatial dimensions as well in that it has a preferred direction. I can move left, right, up, down, all around in space, but for time, us and everything else appears to be stuck going in one direction, the future. A common example physicists use is the egg rolling off of the table. We see that the egg splats and shatters, but we never see the egg spontaneously unsplat and put itself back together on the table. Why this happens and why there's a preferred direction of time has something to do with entropy, or how much disorder is in a system, but that'll be for another video. Because of this preferred direction, some people refer to time as a half dimension. Unlike space, which appears to have no preferred direction and no preferred origin, time, at least according to our current theories, began at the Big Bang, and has only moved towards the future since then. So maybe time isn't what we wanted. If we truly want a fourth dimension, one of space, things get much more complicated to visualize. We can use what we had in special relativity though, and a technique we use to visualize complex three-dimensional shapes called contours. Take this three-dimensional shape. This looks a bit messy, but imagine we slice it at certain points on the z-axis and take a look at the 2D images, called a contour. 2D images are simpler, and if I slice it thinly enough, we can reconstruct the original 3D image piece by piece. This is exactly what we use for topographical maps. Similarly, for a four-dimensional space, imagine a line representing the fourth dimension. At each point on this line, there exists some contour, but this contour is now a three-dimensional object, not two-dimensional. Let's use this technique to construct a four-dimensional object, a tesseract. A tesseract is the four-dimensional analog to the cube in three dimensions. In order to make a cube, we can take a two-dimensional slice of a square and drag it along the z-axis. Similarly, we'll take our three-dimensional cube and slide it along the fourth dimension. Just how when we slice a cube, we get squares, now when we cut the contours of the fourth dimension, we get cubes. Projected onto our three-dimensional space, we get the popular rendition of the tesseract. Past the fourth dimension gets even more complicated, but may turn out useful. String theory has notably up to 10 spatial dimensions. These extra dimensions are a bit different though. Rather than being infinite in extent, the extra dimensions in string theory are tiny and finite, curled around themselves. A common analogy is the ant on a wire. From far away, the wire looks like a line, but it's one dimensional. But if we zoom in, we see a new dimension, the one that loops around. An ant can either move across the wire or around it. It's these tiny curl dimensions that strings vibrate in, forming particles. These tiny dimensions haven't been observed yet, however, so for now, let's stick to the four dimensions of space-time. Uh, that's good. I was worried I would have to animate something like that. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. 
Animation takes a lot of time and energy, and I'll be heading back into full-time classes, so if you want to see more, please support me by subscribing and commenting as to what I should do next. Hopefully I'll get to make more videos like this in the future. Thanks again, peace!